Hey, everybody. Another exciting segment here uh, with an incredible woman who has been really dedicated uh, to helping us all feel amazing um, physically and mentally as we recover from surgery. So I am so excited to introduce you to Amy Kozlowski. Um, she received her BS, MS in physical therapy from the College of Staten Island and has over 20 years of experience specializing in breast cancer recovery, women's health, and muscular skeletal pain and injury. She combines her medical training with extensive knowledge of the body with her intuitive touch and mind and body practices to guide her clients towards reconnecting with their bodies. Committed to a lifelong learning, Amy keeps up on the latest medical research and integrative uh, treatment techniques. She believes in a team approach and collaborates with doctors and other professionals in the medical and alternative fields to ensure that the best care for her clients. Amy has observed numerous surgeries in order to have a better understanding of how the anatomy of her clients must be considered in the recovery process. Amy recently created a workshop series called Connecting With Your Body While You Heal. She is passionate about working with groups to share her knowledge and give tools to help navigate through the healing process. And I just have to say, I'm so excited to have Amy. I've done a session with her privately uh, to help work through some of my scar tissue and some of my pain. I still even experienced 10 years after my mastectomy. And I'm just so stoked to be here to bring awareness and education to just how important um, healing your body beyond just the doctor's office is for your recovery and for just your overall comfort. So Amy, thank you so much for being here. It's really, truly an honor. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to share with you. This is exciting. Thank you. So tell me, tell me about physical therapy as it relates to your breast cancer patients and to recovery from really any surgery. What, what's your like overall approach to helping us get through this? I mean, I really think it's all about just reconnecting with your body after your body's been through something major, traumatic. So, you know, the work is really about supporting you through the healing process and really about education. So I find a lot of my patients come to me and they don't really have an understanding of what's to be expected of the anatomy that's involved in surgery, what's normal, what's not normal. So really educating them and supporting them and validating what comes up in their bodies. Um, also, you know, just working through with them, I do a lot of um, hands-on work just to soften the tissue that's involved to help decrease scar tissue. Um, we do a range of motion exercises, strengthening, um, functional exercises, posture is super important. So just really empowering you to move, to reconnect with your body, you know, not to be afraid. Um, and, you know, it's really a collaborative approach because I really try to work with other, you know, the doctors and the surgeons to really have an understanding of each patient because in any healing, I mean, we're all unique and you, we have to be approached like that. And I'm really passionate about bringing in the mind-body component because the mind and the body are so deeply entwined. So, you know, just that whole approach, it does go for all the things that I treat, but for breast cancer, there really is, you know, special training, special understanding of what, you know, women are going through physically and emotionally. And I have to tell you, because like for me, right, like the physical therapist was kind of this moment um, in my treatment where I was really getting this like extra, like hands-on attention that you just kind of like mm -hmm. need. And I want to step back because I still feel like even today, I mean, I was treated 10 years ago and I was thankfully introduced to physical therapy because I, I really honestly believe at that time I was treated in Colorado. So acupuncture, physical therapy, all of these things were like at the heightness of just people's overall health. But right. still to this day, like meet tons of women that are never even told that physical therapy is a part of their treatment process. So yes. for those, like how, how are they supposed to seek it out? What are they supposed to look for? How do they find somebody like you that really is specializing in the recovery needed for a mastectomy surgery? Yeah, I mean, it's so true, Dana. I mean, I get so many women that come to me and they're like, 
it's not until I told my doctor I couldn't move my arm that they said, oh, you should go for physical therapy. Oh, I have a little swelling. Oh, you should go for physical therapy. So, I mean, luckily I've really connected with a lot of surgeons that understand the role of physical therapy in the recovery process. But I think throughout the whole process of recovering from breast cancer, from surgery, I think the most important thing is that you really need to be your own advocate. And I think that, you know, I've had a lot of patients that have just Googled physical therapy after, you know, breast cancer because they've heard of it and they've had to ask their doctors, you know, can I have this? And sometimes doctors say, oh, you don't need it. And I've had that discussion with some doctors, you know, why isn't it just a given that you just send for physical therapy? And their answer is, that a lot of times, you know, when women are going through this process, there's so many treatments that they have to go to. They don't want to inundate them with something else to go to. But the reality is, is that, you know, hopefully, you know, everyone can find a physical therapist that specializes in this work. And that really, it becomes a healing. I mean, all of my patients tell me, I actually look forward to this. You know, this is something I look forward to and, you know, really wanting to take the onus off the doctors to kind of answer the questions that come up, to monitor the progress. So I think to answer your question, I think patients have to be their own advocate. You really have to ask for it if the doctors aren't giving it to them, you know, a prescription right. to them. Yeah, so you're right. So it's it's prescribed typically and it should be covered by insurance, right? Is there is there any way that like a, a patient could encounter a problem with potentially being able to use their insurance for physical therapy? I mean, I think it depends on, you know, the physical therapist. I mean, I am I'm out of network, so um, you know, you have to have out of network benefits to come right. to me, but there are ways to work with it. I think this is such a specialized area. I've really learned how to navigate through with insurance, and I have certain codes that I build for. So a lot of times I'm able to get exceptions. So even if you don't have out-of-network benefits, you know sometimes I'm able to get insurance to cover it as if it's in-network. And I'm always, you know, wanting to work the best I can. So I really want to give access to this work to everybody, and that's why I've been super passionate about creating education groups just because at least then there's some form of education and there's something to, to follow. So, you know, there's always a way and it's always important to reach out and to let your physical therapist know. If they say they're out of network. Well, I've heard we can get an in-network exception. There, you know, there's ways to work through it. So, you know, there's always a way. That's a great um, point. So just, you know, call ask the questions, ask if there's a breast cancer therapist or specialist in the practice, um, yeah. go to see you if they're in New York City yeah. um, and, and get access. I know you're also doing virtual, which is really helpful. Yeah. And, and that's how you did my session because I'm in Philadelphia. So to be able to be coached through the stretches and you know how I needed to start training my body to you know open up and break through its own uh, trauma was, was really useful. And you do that as well as an alternative. Correct. Yeah, it's been interesting because obviously during COVID, you know, my patient's health and safety is my priority. So I haven't been coming in to see them in the office because I want to keep them safe. But it was, you know, challenging in the beginning because so much of my work is hands on. And it's like, how is this going to translate virtually? But it's actually been pretty amazing, you know, to I feel like it's almost been empowering to do it virtually in a sense because it's given you know, my patients an opportunity to really feel what's happening in their body as I'm guiding them through to kind of get underneath some of the restriction and feel more empowered to move in it and, and take part in their healing. So it's been, it's been, a, it's been a good thing, actually. So I'm going to bring up um, a, a, a tough situation because I was told um, when I got diagnosed, I, ha I started to get the cording in my mm -hmm. lymph node um, right. removal area. And my doctors mm -hmm. told me, they said, like, all you can do is go see a physical therapist and they can like break the cord, but mm -hmm. you have to be really careful because you need to be with somebody that knows what they're doing because if they don't know what they're doing, you could potentially get lipedema from it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of that's true. I've never researched it or deep dived into it, but there was kind of this fear, right? I was like, oh my God, I need this because I can't move my arm. I can't lift my arm. My sh I was starting to get locked shoulder couldn't move. Yeah. And then, you know, here I am stepping into this physical therapist's office going, oh, please, I hope I picked the right person. Yeah. Is this a, is this a common scenario? Is this something you've faced before? Is that like a total wives tale about the courting? I know it's, it's a big complaint for those that have had lymph node removal. 
Yeah, I mean, there is no correlation between courting and lymphedema. So there's no correlation. So because you have courting, it doesn't mean you're going to get lymphedema. You know, lymphedema is one of those things that's really not studied a lot in medical school, but they've made a lot of advances in this area. Um, and it's the kind of thing, it's about education. I mean, really understanding the risk factors involved. And there are a lot of old wives' tales and a lot of myths around that. So I just recommend you speaking with your physical therapist or your physician about what those are. But there isn't a correlation between you know, lymphedema and courting. But, you know, yeah, I mean, you want to really work with someone that is skilled in understanding the anatomy, what's involved, not to become too aggressive, mm -hmm. you know, when working in the arm. Um, but hopefully you find, I think if you find someone that specializes in, in breast cancer, they're going to have an understanding and an education about courting. But again, it's not correlated. Just because you have courting doesn't mean you're going to get lymphedema. Good. We, should do, we should do a Mythbuster series. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things you, you don't know, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, let's take this into, you know, what does treatment for breast cancer patients, why is that different? And why does that look different? And, and why, I, and I'm super excited about it. I, th I think we're finding more physical therapists that are specializing in it. Um, can you just point out yeah. some things that we really need to know um, that, that is kind of different for our bodies and why we have to pay this level of attention to it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just like, you know, again, anybody that's working with women with breast cancer needs to have some sort of continuing education, needs to have an understanding of the anatomy that's involved, if there's a reconstructive surgery, and then, you know, understand the treatments, you know, radiation, chemotherapy, what side effects patients are going through that, you know, are having those treatments done so that that could be supported. Um, again, you know, in my work, I'm doing hands-on work all around the tissue that's involved to soften it, to help reduce scar tissue. It's not just range of motion. I mean, sometimes, you know, physical therapists will say they do physical therapy after a mastectomy, and to them it might just mean range of motion and strain. And that is a part of it, but we have to understand the actual anatomy and what what really goes on in the body. And I think from not just a physical standpoint, but from an emotional standpoint, I mean, I think that, you know, we have to support that process because both physically, both emotionally. So I think anyone that's working in this area, they really have a passion for it. They really have an understanding of what women are going through and they're supporting them all around. It's not, you know, physical therapy, it kind of uh, could be stereotyped a certain way. And for me, it's, I think every physical therapist is unique and different, but it's a really specialized area that needs a lot of love and care and someone that really has a passion for what they're doing. And I think most women that, or most physical therapists that do this work do have that, that passion for sure. So I think it is special. It's not just going for an orthopedic injury and there are other areas that physical therapists treat, but this is real specialized. And I'm so happy you said that, actually, because for me, um, I, I've been in this now for 10 years. I did physical therapy following my surgery, but I have continuously um, continued like massage therapy because that seems to be what really, really works for me, um, and even acupuncture and some other alternatives, things like that, yoga, of course. But uh, I, I think what you said is really interesting, and you're very intuitive like I am, and um, my massage therapist warned this when we worked on my scars. We worked both on my mastectomy scars, but also all my scarring around my rib cage and that roped around to my back and my shoulder blades and my neck. And we did a really intensive scar treatment one day. And she told me that, she said, be really gentle on yourself today because so many emotions that you have are embedded in the scar tissue. Mm -hmm. And when, you, when you're breaking that up, you're, you're also breaking up like an emotional release as well. And yeah. And at first I was kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. That sounds a little hokey dokey to me. Yeah. I cried on the table. I let go of things. Like when I felt that scar tissue break up in my body, I felt like a release of like tension and emotion and all of these things I was dealing with. So like it was very emotional for me just as much as it was physical. Um, yeah. Do you see that with your patients that you treat? Yeah, I mean, I think that it is true. I mean, the touch is so important. The touch. It's like, you know, to desensitize 
and this is an area that's so vulnerable. So holding space and just touching someone itself, like that brings on the emotions. But it is true. I mean, in order for us to heal, you know, we have to allow our body to process what's happening. And so it is so important to sort of take the time as you're being worked on or with yourself to just be with yourself and to feel the sensations that are coming up so that your body can let go of them and then heal. And it, it's interesting because, because I'm medically trained, but I also approach my patients in a very integrated way. You know, I never want to come across hokey because like what you said, if someone says that to you sometimes. So I kind of, you know, I feel my way through but the reality is, yeah, the mind-body so powerfully connected and we hold so much in our bodies. And so trauma is in the body. So it's, you know, it's just having someone that's, you know, passionate and nurturing to help you kind of work, work through that and to feel, feel what's happening. Yeah. Well, being gentle, like you said, being gentle with yourself, huge. I say that to every one of my patients, be gentle with yourself, you know? Yeah. Well, and I just remember how frustrating recovery was for me. I was very strong. I was an athlete. I was a dancer. I was very active. And I just kind of got a lot of the ways I knew how to like exercise and be healthy were ripped away from me. And that was a really big struggle because it was actually literal uh, physical limitations that I was facing. Um, so, so that being said, I, I would love to hear from you what we, we know that following a surgery, mastectomy, reconstruction, maybe even lumpectomies, I'd love to hear your point of view on that, yes. need physical therapy. But what about, what signs could we be looking for even further out of your initial treatment that might be warning signs that say, maybe you should pay attention to this part of your body again? I mean, I think it's just listening to your body. It's just any kind of body signal. So I say body signal is pain, uh, heaviness, feeling of restriction, tightness, numbness, tingling. I think the body has a voice, so I think the body talks to us. And you know, just to add to, because you just mentioned all of your background and your athleticism and everything like that, the other part of physical therapy and what I try to do, I want to, you know, get my patients back to their lives, you know, to moving like they did before. And, you know, to, and I always say, I mean, might this be an opportunity for you to go forward and get back to everything, but in a new and better way, because now there's a new understanding of your body. So, you know, it's different, but it's a new understanding. And so I think that, you know, to answer your question, I think when you, when you start to feel things in your body, it's not uncommon, it's not, un, it's not abnormal to feel things years after. Whenever there's an injury or vulnerability in the body, it, it can show up at any point, just posturally something goes on, emotionally something goes on. But when you feel those body signals, you know, you need to tune in, you need to pay attention, and then I think it's time to get some support, you know, someone that can help you kind of work through that and navigate through that process. Are there any like body warnings? I think you just rattled off great ones, right? Pain, heaviness, discomfort, numbness. Um, anything specifically that we could say to like the person that is recovering and is like three years out, five years out, 10 years out. Like I, at this point, I, this is my problem. I let things become chronic because mm -hmm. there's just this reality to say, okay, my, my neck and shoulders are just always going to hurt me. And I yeah. just succumb to the pain and the discomfort because you're right, it's a lot, right? It's another appointment on the books, it's another thing. And even though I do my best, I, I wait till it gets really, really bad until I seek out the help. But um, for, for those of us that have been living with some of this chronic pain due to our surgeries and mastectomies, um, any advice or input that you could say like, if the pain is a, a level eight, like call somebody, or if it's a level two, okay, wait, like any kind of tips or point of views or perspectives to, to get our butts out of the chair and into your office? <laughs> well, I mean, I just think if you're feeling, I just think, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you kind of just give in to the things you're feeling and you're like, this, I'm just going to feel this way. But no, you don't have to, you know, it's like when you're feeling things in your body, your body's saying to an end. So I think it's different for each person. I think when it becomes a level eight, then I think that person's getting up and out of their chair because it's like you can't function. 
But I think it's even like taking time every day, just closing your eyes, just tuning into your body. And what do I feel? What's coming up? And it's like, hopefully you, you work with somebody or you have some tools. So if you're feeling some tightness, you have some stretches you can do to kind of move through that. And, you know, I think if you feel something, it's, it's time to kind of tune in and, and take some, you know, do something about that for sure. So it's okay to think about your self-care. It's 100% okay to think, don't be in pain, get out, get the help that you need. You yes. don't have to suffer. This is not you being selfish. This is really us taking care of ourselves. No, exactly. Yeah, because I think when we take care, you know, that we're just better and more effective in all that we do. It's like we have to take care of ourselves first, right? So we're feeling things. It's that body saying, like, do so, help me, support me. And then, and I think that what happens is I have patients I work with, they feel better and then they get back to whatever and then they feel tight again. And just they come back and I say, have you been doing your stretches? No, no, no I've been feeling okay. But the point is, Healthy. I don't need to do the stretches. I'm busy, I don't need to do the stretches. But the point is, if you, it doesn't have to be a lot, but if you take like, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day just to be with yourself, just to move a little bit, so you're just validating what's up in your body. It makes a difference. I think that's the incentive to kind of take care and to continue on with the self-care. It's to, to see the change, you know? So this has been so encouraging and so thoughtful. And thank you so much for the work that you do for our community, for us. Um, how can we find you? If Say if somebody's living in the middle of Nebraska and they don't have a physical therapist that specializes in this space, where can we go to find you so we can get the help we need? Yeah, I mean, you can go onto my website, amykozlowski.com. I'm on Instagram. Um, I really, you know, it's like I said to you before, the virtual space is new for me, but it's, it's effective. Right now, insurance is covering it. So, you know, anybody that wants some guidance or assessment, is, you know, please reach out. I'm happy to help or email me if there's specific questions or happy to talk on the phone or whatever it is. But, um, you know, I'm here. So my website has all of my contact information or like I said, Instagram, Amy Cause 5. Um, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> we'll, we'll be sure to list all of your links because um, as much as I love your last name, I'm not sure I would know how to spell it. So we will put them all right here below. So make sure you tap, uh, tap into the notes below and stay tuned because we're also going to work through a few amazing exercises that everybody should have in their Rolodex in the event that they feel uncomfortable. So Amy, thank you so much for joining us and being here to support us. And your work means a lot to those of us that you treat. So thank you. Thank you.